In Travel Watch, Venice is taking crowd control to a whole new level by using technology to track people coming in and out of the city. Officials are gathering cell phone data from tourists and using a surveillance system to monitor visitors in a bid to prevent overcrowding. And this comes as several countries reopen their borders for fully vaccinated travelers. Chris Livesay is following this story and joins us now from Italy. I find this fascinating. Um, Chris, you know, the pandemic has given a lot of us an opportunity to reassess whether we want things to actually go back to normal or maybe there should be a new normal. But the thing about <laughs> Venice is, uh, you know, tourists, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, the people hate the crowds, but Venice is wholly dependent on tourism. There, there aren't other industries there. So I find this very, very interesting. Give us some context behind the tourism tracking system. When did the city launch the program? And why do officials even feel that they need to do this? That, well, that's right, Emery. You know, Venice is a victim of its own beauty. I mean, it's just a stunningly enchanting place, unlike anywhere else in the world. But because of that, it gets so many tourists, approximately 20 to 30 million tourists every year. That's in a normal year. Of course, the last year and a half is anything but normal. And that's why we're only hearing about this program right now. So this surveillance system was actually launched in September of 2020, but you didn't hear about it because there were no tourists in Venice to be heard of at the time. So it's only now uh, that things are slowly getting back to normal and we're seeing large groups of tourists return to Venice that people are saying, hey, wait a minute, what's going on? When did you bring in all these cameras and start monitoring? My, my data in the meantime. The reason they're doing it uh, is to basically keep better track of who's coming and going. Right now, it's been very hard to do that. You could measure how many guests were staying at hotels and that kind of thing. But what to do with the vast majority of tourists who are day trippers, who only come in uh, via train or they park their cars, they come in and then they leave. Uh, this new system seeks to give a precise amount of people that are coming every day and also exactly where those people come from. So using your cell phone, uh, your cell phone in your pocket, they can track the SIM card uh, and see where it's registered. So they can tell whether you're American, German, Japanese, uh, and eventually use that data to try and come up with a strategy for either limiting the amount of people or, or coming up with, with different incentives. But all of it is, at least in very broad strokes, intended to get that number of tourists from 30 million people every year to something a little more manageable. And just to give you some perspective, there's only about 50,000 uh, actual Venetians, 50,000 Venetians who, li who live in the city of Venice. So when you compare that to that annual figure of 30 million people, Venetians are regularly outnumbered in their own city. And I can sort of understand it. We, uh, I spent a few days in Venice, and I know that I would sort of wait for the cruise ships to come in and then go back out because this influx of tourists from the cruise ships really sort of transformed the city for at least a few hours. And it was so much nicer when there were fewer people there. But, you know, that's the nature of a tourist hub. It is a magical place. When I hear surveillance, though, I think, all this data being collected, just sort of massive amounts. Where are you going? How are you moving? That, that concerns me in terms of privacy. You know, is this data being protected? If you want to opt out of it, can you? Um, well, the short answer is yes, you can opt out of it by leaving your cell phone at home. Uh, most people aren't going to do that, however. Now, Venice says that this this information is all aggregated and none of it is uh, individual. You're totally anonymous, so they're not able to even see who owns that cell phone in the pocket. They're simply able to see where it came from uh, and, and be able to use that to kind of, you know, manage the, the ebbs and flows of, of tourists. Um, but I do hear your point. I've been inside of the, the control room where, you know, they have these, the, these big video screens up and they're able to show, you know, people gathering and say, St. Mark's Square or around the Rialto Bridge. Not only that, they're able to tell exactly where that person comes from based on a their kind of color-coded system that shows, you know, this person's an American or this group of 300 people are from Germany. Um, and it does all feel kind of minority report when you see these different bits of data <laughs> pop up over somebody's head inside a specific place. But the city swears that it's completely anonymous and not at all an invasion of privacy. 
Okay, then what's the next step, though? What do they do with this data? I've been reading about, you know, maybe scheduling P, uh, tourists or gates or, like, where do they go with this? Well, that's the big controversy. So the city says it wants to introduce this system of turnstiles. So uh, kind of like what you go through when you're at the airport or the ugly analogy of being inside of a theme park. In fact, uh, you know, many people have said that Venice is just come one step closer to becoming a theme park and losing its identity as a city. And here's the double-edged sword that you talked about. I mean, this system is in place to limit the amount of tourists and make the city more livable for actual Venetians. But in doing so, it might resemble something that looks a lot less like a city. So that new system is scheduled to be put in place in 2022. Uh, the city says it's going forward. However, there's been some talk here in Rome from the culture ministry. Uh, to suggest they're not at all in favor of it. So it's it's not 100% that it's it's actually going to go through. But I mean, the big thing you need to keep in mind here is that, uh, you know, as I mentioned, Venice is a victim of its of its own beauty. They're trying to come up with solutions here. They've been trying to come up for many years. And as you mentioned, there's really only one industry left, uh, which is tourism. Uh, for there to be a long term solution to this kind of mass tourism that we're seeing, uh, you need to see big strides made in Venice in terms of incentivizing new industries. I mean, it's a, it has a big culture industry. It already has the Venice Biennale, the Venice Film Festival. There are many efforts in place to try and get actual people, actual Italians or otherwise, to, to live inside of these homes that have been turned into Airbnbs or, or bed and breakfast, that kind of thing. Uh, and, and until they come up with that solution, this, this kind of, uh, you know, surveillance system might kind of be a band-aid on the wound, but nobody really thinks it's going to reverse that major trend of mass tourism that creates mass depopulation. Yeah, it's so true. It's just, uh, it's such a beautiful place. I understand why people want to go there in droves, um, but it sort of breaks my heart to hear what they're, what they're going to have to implement to put a, put a lid on it, to keep it sustainable. Um, hey, Chris, great conversation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Emery.